Hello, Chris Kiak here, Vice President of ConnectsCAD with ConnectsTech. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate and train how to use the marking functionality with the Remember Me tool. We've currently got a 05 Adding Notes Remember Me group saved away here in our list. I'll just double click on that to activate it and zoom me into this particular location in the model. Once this is selected or highlighted, what I'll then do is just go to the Marks drop down list. Here you can see there's a variety of different tools. So let's go ahead and just cover what those different tools offer. Let's begin with the Note feature. When I activate Note, Note is basically meant for you to be able to just type any sort of free text or any string of text that you want, or you can also uh, show elevations of particular locations or points in the model. In this particular case, let me just say my Note here is a test. And then if you want to, you can press Save and then any of those typed notes will be saved here in the attributes folder of your model and in this drop-down list. So let's just hit OK and then we'll pick any point here in the model. So I'll just snap along let's say the edge of this beam and there you can see the note has been placed and you can continue to repeat this as needed and then when you're done you just right click and interrupt or press escape on your keyboard. Alright so let's try that again but this time let's do an elevation. So the note dialog box appears. We'll then use the elevation and notice it's in brackets and when you see any kind of text here that's all capital and in brackets it's either a template editor property like a report property or it's this special uh, code or parametric value that returns the elevation here in the model. So let's just say OK and then I'm going to change my snapping to just snap to the end of that beam and there you will see that the elevation at the end of that beam at the center of the column is 23 foot 0. The next feature that we'll go ahead and show is the mark functionality. So here, the difference between a note and a mark is, is a mark is a parametric value that's associated to a part in the model. So let's go ahead and say mark. The dialog box looks similar, but we're going to choose some parametric template editor values, such as the name, profile, or even a combination of different properties here together. So for instance here I can do profile, weight, and length and then just do free text of putting a dash between each one of those properties. So let's go ahead and hit OK. We'll then select a beam here in the model. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just insert that somewhere here. So let's do nearest. And then I'll just insert it right there. And now you'll see that the profile size as well as the weight and length have then all be, been reported. Now when we're done we'll just hit interrupt. And what's really neat is that we can switch uh, between Imperial and Metric. So if I turn Imperial off, and then if I just reload this particular note, notice that the values are then displayed in Metric. Uh, this is going to be uh, kilograms for the, um, for the weight as well as millimeters for the length. Also take notice that the elevation changed from 23 foot 0 and it's also parametric and shows 7,010 millimeters here at the center of the column. Next let's go ahead and change the beam size here. So if I change this to W12 by 30 and modify, when I reload this you'll see that the mark has changed to W12 by 30. So this is completely parametric. It's not just dumb text that's done once. Uh, because of that template editor field of being in the brackets here, that is associated to that particular ID or GUID in the model. And anytime those properties change and you reload that Remember Me group, the data will be updated based on the current properties in the model. OK, I've also added a couple marks here using the leader line functionality. So you can see here on the column I've put the profile as well as its name and pointed directly to the column. So let's show you how that works. If I come up here, I'm going to say mark with leader line. And then let's go ahead and choose, let's say for instance here, the name property. I'll then press OK. I'll then go ahead and pick the beam. And then I'll pick a point along the nearest bottom flange there. And then I'll just pick somewhere out in space. And there you can see that the mark with the intelligent property name of the beam is then linked with a leader line back over to the beam itself. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the automated marking features here. So let's go to another view that we have that shows us an isometric of a floor plan. This will zoom us out 
and you can see that I've got some cyan pieces here that are associated with this particular uh, saved remember me group. Now what I want to do is I want to kind of create like an erection drawing or erection plan style uh, view here and just quickly see all of the beam sizes that are associated on this floor level. So what I can do is I can just come up here to the mark functionality and say mark all parts. Then I'll go ahead and just define the profile attribute here and we'll just say OK. And then all of those parts that are associated with this saved group and that's selected or highlighted here are then going to have their marks displayed. The marks are calculated to be displayed at the midpoint of all of these beams, or if they're contour plates or poly beams, it's always at the center point of those uh, types of parts. Okay, so we've got those uh, marks there for the floor plan. And let's say that we want to zoom in a little bit and get some additional marks, maybe for instance the assembly position. Now the functionality that we want to do here is we say want to put those marks always towards the left end of the beam. So one thing that we can kind of do here is we can say mark all parts uh, here with the reference point. And in this particular case, let's just do the brackets and say assembly position, close the bracket, right? And let's even save that so that way it's in our drop down, right? And then we'll press OK. And then what we're uh, asked to do is we're prompted to pick at least uh, one of the beams. So let's pick one of these parts here. And then we'll go ahead and say, where along that beam do I want the mark to pretty much be? So let's say that it's right here. All right, so there's the piece mark. And now when I pick any additional parts, it's going to put that mark on those parts in the relative position of the point that I picked on the first part. So now I can just easily continue to pick the additional beams and have that mark towards the left end. Same thing here, even if I pick the other beams, it's going to be that distance away from that end of that particular beam. If at any point you want to get rid of all of the marks that you've created with a particular view and start over, you can just come to the mark feature and say delete marks. You can also change the color of the marks and what you want on the, uh, the model, especially if you have different background colors here for your model uh, view or your background. So you can choose from any of these five colors that you see here in the drop down list. The last thing to cover here is that if I go to the model attributes folder, you can see where all of these particular um, mark lists or labels that I've saved away, there's a file in the model attributes folder that this is read from that you can copy from job to job or stick in your model templates. Here it's called remember me label settings.txt or text file and that can be opened up and viewed within notepad and there you can see all of the different um, saved away attributes or notes that you've used. One last note about marks or the graphics here displayed in the model is let's go ahead and go back to my adding notes uh, remember me group that I had saved away before. Notice here that when I load it now that the note text is extremely small or a lot smaller than it was before. And the reason why this is, is I came in here to the Options, Advanced Options. Underneath the Model View category, there is a default font size here. And you can change this number. If you uh, increase it, it's going to make that text larger by default. And if you decrease it, then of course it's going to shrink it. I think I had it at 12 before and I changed it to 8. When you change this value, you do need to restart Tecla Structures before it takes effect. So that's just another way that you can kind of troubleshoot or control the size of the labels and text that you see in the model. And if at any time, once you're completed or looking at something and you would like to remove those text labels without deleting them here from the actual view itself, all you have to do is right click and say update window, or you can right click and say redraw window and all of those graphics and any of the temporary visualization states or colors will all be cleared automatically from the view. Then if you want to see them again, you just double click and load that view and then all of the text and the visualization will be reloaded. See the next video tutorial that's going to review and discuss how to draw line graphics as well as dimensions in the model.